in today's video, we're going to be checking out the all new Transformers Kingdom Wave 3 Deluxe Class Maximal Fossilizer Wing Finger. And oh boy, I have never been so wrong about a particular release by Hasbro and Karatomi. For those of you who watch my thoughts and analysis review, I really bashed this figure and said that it was probably the worst fossilizer out of the entire line. But actually getting him in hand, wow, this is probably actually the best one. Now in this video, we'll be going through both robot mode as well as his pterodactyl mode, but also be sure to stick around to the end of the video as I'll actually be giving you a detailed tutorial on how you can combine Wingfinger with both the Fossilizer Paleotrex as well as Ractonite to form a super awesome Fossilizer Combiner. Taking a look here at the robot mode, you can see here that we've got a really awesome Maximal Ninja. They've done a fantastic job as far as the design is concerned. Now for those who are not a huge fan of these Fossilizers to begin with, then you're probably more than likely not going to like this figure as he does have some stick insect qualities about him, especially towards where the torso is concerned. But other than that, I think he looks really, really cool. You can see here for the head, we've got what appears to be an almost fencing mask. I think this has turned out super, super nicely. This is actually one of the first maximal fossilizers that we are getting to get its own original mold. So in the past, we've gotten some repaints such as Tricranius, which was a maximal, but originally based on a Predacon. This guy, Wingfinger, is actually the first maximal, and I think he's a really, really awesome looking design. You can see here for the head, awesome looking paint variation. I think that's turned out super, super nicely here at the top. The maximal insignia slap bang there in the center. And we've also got some nice paint detailing here on the actual inside such as this blue visor and some black details definitely does give you the impression that this is indeed a maximal ninja really really awesome you can see we've got the rib cage of the pterodactyl mode here on the top of the arms which i think looks quite cool and i think the overall paint variation is really really well done you definitely do get a very authentic bone colorization you can see how it's almost a creamish type of color and i think it's done really nicely you can see the lighter shades of white that we've got going on here for the fingers which too look as if though they've got some knuckle dusters slap bang there on the tips of them which looks really really awesome you can see we have got the blades, which can in fact double as a crossbow, which I'll showcase later on in the review. The torso, I'm not a huge fan of this. It does look rather stick insect-like, but it's definitely not a bad design choice by any stretch of the imagination. You can see some nice sculpt work here, and it does actually become the neck of the pterodactyl mode. Turning our attention here down to the lower section, a very agile-looking character. You can see here we've once again got some of those ninja motifs going on with the feet design. So I think that looks really awesome, very elegant, and looking as if though these in fact could actually kick a hole in their Predacon opponents. And then as we spin around here to the side, we merely have the pterodactyl head which actually I don't think looks too bad and this can actually double as a shield which I'll showcase in just a second. As far as wing fingers articulation is concerned ball joint here at the head which can look left to right up and down as well as tilt side to side we can in fact actually open and close the mask as well which is really really cool so if he's in battle he can just whooshing, and he's ready to take on some of those predacons which I think is super awesome. We do get a hinge joint here at the shoulder as well as a hinge joint out to the sides. We also do get a hinge joint here at the elbow full rotation just at the lower section of the elbow as well as a ball joint and if you actually position this correctly you can utilize this ball joint in order to dip the hand to make him look as if though maybe he's dragging these blades along the ground much like you've seen from some of those movies so really really nice articulation there we also do get a mid weights rotation joint I guess you could call it this can rotate the full 360 the legs here can kick forwards that far to a terrific degree as well as can kick back to that far they can also kick out to the sides to a fantastic degree we also do get a knee joint here although it's really and truly a double knee joint so you can utilize both of them to get a terrific range of motion which is just exceptional and then we also do get a rotation here at the knee unfortunately no form of ankle rocker pivot i think this is the first kingdom figure to not have ankle rocker pivot besides the core class but it's definitely not too bad due to the nature of the design the feet can actually support some of those more dynamic poses without actually hinging but i guess you can also pivot the foot forwards and backwards so as far as his articulation is concerned he's really well done in my opinion and even just taking a look here through my camera i'm such a big fan of how this figure has turned out and despite him being one of the more skinnier and lankier looking fossil Believe me, this is a very, very large deluxe. This is probably one of the biggest deluxe figures we've gotten from Kingdom so far, which was something that once again took me by surprise. Now, as far as the weapon implementation or the versatility of the weapons is concerned, you can see you can have them as ninja blades, or you can in fact actually take them and peg them into the ports. Now, you have to sort of half peg them in on either side. So just let's push this one through ever so slightly to create a crossbow. Now this is super cool. I'll be sure to post some images at the beginning of the review, probably in the middle and then some at the end of this guy in some action poses, but that definitely looks more than realistic. And the way they've actually designed the knuckles once again, it definitely does give you the impression that you could insert a bow into that, actually pull it back and spring it off. So really nice attention to detail there. We can also bring in the pterodactyl head and peg this on the underside of the arm. So you can utilize this as a shield, which too I think is so, so awesome. Such a fantastic looking design. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Really, really awesome. To me, he definitely gives me Snake Eyes vibes where that head is concerned. I just think that's turned out so, so nicely. 
and you can see from a side perspective that difference in the paint and we've even got some here going on for the neck so i think quite a lot of thought has actually been put into this figure you can see here from the back we've got some nice bone detailing which i think has been colorized perfectly well so let's get into some of those comparisons and here we have a comparison between windfinger paleotrex as well as ractonite and to be quite honest paleotrex has so far been my favorite fossilizer but i think she's just been ever so slightly edged over by windfinger i think this guy's really really cool you can see that as far as the scale is concerned he is in fact the biggest out of the fossilizers so far but what i guess you have to take into account is that Ractonite is quite a broad, quite a bulky looking character, so therefore the plastic is more spread outwards than upwards. Whereas with this guy, considering he's very skinny, I guess it did allow for the extra height. But actually feeling them, I'd say they're roughly the exact same as far as parts count is concerned, especially between Paleotrex and Wingfinger. Of course, Ractonite is just a little heavier due to the nature of the design. But let me know down in the comment section below out of these three, which of them do you prefer? I maybe would like to see how Wingfinger would look sporting the Paleotrex color scheme, as I think that would be quite cool. But for me, at least at the time of this recording i think wingfinger may in fact just be my favorite and i'm really excited to show you guys the actual combined form that you can do with these particular characters now for transformation you guys all know the trick here with these fossilizers they don't transform they break apart and then we can reassemble them into really cool fossilized dinosaurs so to begin with you're going to want to take the pterodactyl head here just pop that off to the side we can then separate here at the torso Come here to this section, disengage all of this, just essentially completely break them apart into loads of different tiny pieces. Even these crossbow sections do become the wings. And then we can just pop the arms off. And then I believe this section does actually stay in one piece. So you're going to want to collapse the head sculpt in, bring this up and over, and this slot will peg here into this tab. So snap that there into place and repeat the same process here for this side. So clip that in there. We can then bring in this particular piece. Now you can see we have a cutout that is in fact going to peg into this. So align these up appropriately, slide them in upon one another, and boom, there you've got basically the central torso. We can take the pterodactyl head, arch this section back. It does in fact actually snap into place for robot mode. So just click this back and oops, that wasn't meant to happen, but peg this section back on and just bring in the combined head if it does come off snap that on, spoilers. And then we can bring in the back legs. So for this, you're going to want to make sure that you put that in there, rotate here and hinge this section down. Come here to this side and repeat the same process. So port this section in, rotate down and hinge down as well, just like so. So at the moment we should be left with something along the lines of this. Then we can proceed to bring in these sections, extend this out. And if my memory serves me correctly, I believe that this is supposed to port in like that. And then we can bring in the arms, peg that in, arch this section back take one of these sections, put this into place, and of course, repeat the exact same process here for the opposite side. So snapping all of these sections in, arching that heel spur back, porting this dagger in, and there we have a wing finger fully transformed up into his pterodactyl alt mode. And I've got to be honest, looking pretty decent, especially considering that this is essentially a fossil. You can no doubt identify the type of species of dinosaur this is supposed to be. And I think the color variation is near enough spot on to what you would really expect from a real life representation. You can see as far as the sculpt work is concerned, I think the proportions are really well done. You can see we've got the hollowed out skull there with some awesome black paint apps, which is something they didn't have to do. We've got where the eyes would be, the nose section would be, as well as some nice paint variation as we actually open the jaw here as well. They've also picked this out in a black to give you that hollowed impression, which I think is a really nice attention to detail. You can see here for the neck, we've got that port, which does look slightly unsightly, but it's definitely not bad by any stretch with the imagination. You can see the spinal cord here. We've got the rib cage on the side, the little skeleton toes, as well as where the wings would in fact be. I'm not entirely sure how aerodynamic wing finger would be as he doesn't actually have any skin to transport himself through the air, but I think it's a really, really cool looking fossil. As far as the articulation is concerned, you guys all saw that he does have a jaw which can open and close. It more or less latches closed. So you can't really position it in an almost medium open mouth pose. You sort of have to just open it all the way so that it looks like he's screaming down on his Predacon opponents. We do get a full rotation here at the neck and the neck can also hinge up and down. Arms here are very versatile so you can hinge all of these, hinge all of this, hinge this back and forth, rotate this up to the top. Really you can do pretty much anything with this and if you do decide to disengage the legs you can also bring these down but officially they are supposed to stay tabbed in for this so you'd really only get a hinge joint here at the back as well as the ball joint here for the toes. So I'm definitely pretty satisfied with how this guy turned out. Personally for me though, if I had to choose between the two modes, I'd probably opt to keep him in his robot mode. Welcome to the National History Museum of Dinosaur Bones. Here we have for a comparison Wingfinger compared next to both Paleotrex and of course 
horse, Ractonite. And you can see that he is by far the biggest fossilizer that we've gotten so far, but that's mainly due to the wingspan. If I just bring him in here for a closer look, really and truly, you have to display this guy on a flat stand all times, as I think he just looks so awesome flying in midair. You can see that he definitely is a lot bigger than what we got here with Paleotrex as far as his width is concerned. But as far as length is, he's pretty much identical. And here for Ractonite, as mentioned earlier, this guy's a little more compact. So, of course, it's going to be a little shorter. But I think the scale is pretty decent between these three deluxes. I'm not entirely sure how they would scale with the other mainline characters, such as Beast Megatron. I think they're more or less supposed to scale with one another. But I'm definitely really liking what Hasbro are doing with these guys. And I'm hoping that they do continue them for the next Transformers line. So, let's break them up into individual components so that I can show you guys the fully triple combined form. So, for this combined form, before we actually get into it, something worth mentioning is that I have not gone by any type of instructions at all. This is all merely unofficial. And I've only really gone by the live stream where the designer did in fact show the triple combiner so there may be some things that I do miss out as we don't really get a great look of it but I'm pretty certain that I've got it very close if not almost spot on to what he showcased so for this you're going to want to break apart all three of the fossilizers into their individual components so you can see we've got some Ractonite pieces wing finger pieces and Paleotrek pieces some of these will in fact actually be left over you will not need all of them but I guess we can come up with some form of weapon after we've actually built him so let's get straight into this so first of all you're going to want to grab yourself a pair of of Ractonite legs, just like this. We can then take this section here, and I believe you're supposed to hinge this around like so, port that section there into place, and then bring this Paleotrek section in, rotate this around. Something worth mentioning is that you will want the tabs facing forwards as we're actually going to use other components to build these up to create almost knee pad armor. So snap that one there into place, rotate around so that we've got full capability of the actual knee joint perhaps it would be better if i utilized this end so that we have a little more of a symmetrical looking design so that is essentially how you're going to want the legs to look on both sides we can then bring in these sections and really and truly it's just to bulk the armor up so we can just port that there or rotate this down it's really up to your own personal preference and come here to this side and repeat the same process so snap that into place so that we have a pair of legs which look roughly along the lines of this we can then bring in our paleotrex t-rex head now for this you're going to want to ensure the t-rex head is snapped into place like so and then what we can do is peg that section in there take this section and port that in there as well and these are effectively the legs for our just stolt fully formed then we can turn our attention to the torso you're going to want to flip out the tiny little peg that Ractonite has on the top of her head. Set this here off to the side for now. We can then take the Styracosaurus head, open the jaw as wide as it can go, and also fold this peg in as well so that we merely just have the interior of the mouth. And this is where you're going to want to bring in what is effectively the combiner head. I'm super glad Hasbro did engineer this into this figure, as really it does feel like a little bit of an afterthought, but it's really nice to see them actually include this. Separate this section clean off, open this up to reveal the combiner head, and you can see we have a peg that will port into the hollow gap on the roof of Ractonite's mouth. So it can be a little difficult to get that in there. But just slide that into place, fully open that so that we are left with something along the lines of this. Now we can bring back in our Ractonite body, put that there into place so that we're left with something that looks like this. Now this is where things get really interesting. So you're going to want to take these components here and I believe that you are supposed to actually peg this section here and come to this side and repeat the same process so peg that in hinge these sections around like so so they're facing the front we can then take this here rotate this around take the tiny little ractonite legs and port them into the top of this fold out these pegs and arch that there to the back unfortunately for mine they are a little loose but i'm hoping that's probably a little firmer on your copy and then come to this side and repeat the same process so flip this port out here now what you're going to want to do is take these sections these are actually going to peg on the underside so we can also do that here for this side port this section in here like so and then these two tabs will in fact peg into these slots so snap that one there into place come here to this side and snap that into place. If anything comes untabbed, just realign it afterwards. So we're left with something that looks along the lines of this, which already is looking super cool. And then we can begin to form the arms here for our Gestalt. So fold this section down, bring in one of these Paleotrex hands, 
and port this here into place just like so and that's essentially one arm complete we can then do the same for the opposite side so port that section in as well once again this is completely up to your own personal preference so you can really mix and match these to your own personal desire and then you can see that we have the ports that are created out of the hands of wing finger that are actually going to hold in the arms for our gestalt so snap that there into place come here to this side and also snap that here into place and now we can combine the two halves to form the entire combiner and there you have all three of the fossilizers fully transformed and combined into this really awesome gestalt now we'll take a closer look at this here in just a second you can see that we've got a few different leftover pieces now i personally haven't come up with any type of formula to utilize these i guess you could just peg them onto the body to create as armor we've got some tails here we've got some wings we've also got some armor pieces as well as this head so really you could port these onto the back but personally i haven't found a specific place for these to go so i will merely just be showing you what i have come up with so far and not any alternate conversions for these pieces now taking a look here at the combiner itself my goodness this has actually turned out surprisingly pretty decent you would honestly think that this was hasbro's intention from the offset as this really does look very awesome and i can definitely imagine this in a transformers movie especially a live action movie it looks fantastic if only the dinobots in age of extinction combined to form something as half as awesome as this honestly that would have been just so cool but as we spin around here onto the back you can see we still have various different ports so some of those excess pieces that i just showcased i'm pretty certain you could find places for them to go but from a front or perspective this is pretty much dead on to what the designer showcased on that live stream and I think it looks really awesome you can see we now have that combiner head there which looks fantastic We've got the very awesome design here for the chest piece which I think also looks really cool and you've just got so much articulation for this guy loads of different hinge joints loads of different ankle rocker joints loads of different elbow joints the versatility honestly is endless and I'm pretty certain that many of you could in fact come up with an even better combiner and imagine if you had two of each of these characters in order to create a six figure combiner that would just be awesome but as it stands for a three fossilizer combiner I'm thoroughly impressed with how this has turned out and I'd really love to know down in the comment section below what you guys think of this are you a fan of this is this something that you'll be doing with your own fossilizer or are you just going to stick them in their individual modes? Be sure to let me know down below. So that just about concludes my review here for Transformers Kingdom, the Lux Class Fossilizer Maximal Wing Finger. Overall, I think this figure here is heaps of fun. And to be honest, I've always thought that if you get a lot of enjoyment out of a figure, despite what the design looks like and despite what other people think, then it's already a really worthy addition to your collection as it's something that you're actually benefiting from and having a blast actually playing around with. This guy is super versatile. I think his robot mode is awesome. The different weapon configurations that you can come up with is really 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 cool i think his articulation is pretty decent as well despite him not having those anchor rocker pivots you still are able to get him into some very dynamic poses and i think the design has turned out pretty awesome as well despite me initially not being a huge fan of it the pterodactyl alt mode 2 i think looks pretty decent and is rather accurate to what you would expect if you were to go and visit these in the likes of the national history museum so that too is cool i like how these dinosaurs do appear to all be in scale with one another when in their alt forms so that's a really nice attention to detail and of course if you dismantle all three of them you can come up with a really wacky and cool combiner which can result in endless amount of fun. I'm pretty certain there is even a cooler concept that you can create out of these three than the actual one that I showcased in this video. So that in itself makes these particular characters some of the most enjoyable figures across the entire War for Cybertron trilogy line so far, even more so than the weaponizers that we got throughout Earthrise and of course Siege. I would love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys think of this particular character and of course the fossilizers in general. I do think that this is in fact one of the final fossilizers that we're officially going to be getting in the main line of Kingdom. Maybe there is one planned for wave four but i'm pretty certain we'll see this guy repainted into a predacon much like we've seen the other two repainted into maximals i'd love to know what you guys think of this figure will you be combining him into the gestalt or are you just not a huge fan of these fossilizers at all as always let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of the review and until my next video i'll see you then thanks for watching